of the course on blend modes. Go ahead and open up this project number six, blend modes, not the final one, but just the other one, so that you can play around with the different blend modes and see how they work. We have seen these before in the class, and when you have a layer selected, you can see the blend mode up here next to opacity. And basically what it is, is how different layers interact. So it's going to basically make the top layer interact with whatever's beneath it, or whatever layer you choose to change the blend mode to, it will interact with whatever's beneath it. So we have these different layers. You can see we have water, water texture. Let's leave this water texture on and then also our woman jumping. And I'm going to zoom in here and just show you with the woman jumping, if we change the blend mode to something like darken, you'll see what happens. It starts to blend these layers together. Now these blend modes are organized into different categories and you can hover over these blend modes when you open up that menu and it will give you a preview of what it's going to look like. The, this first section is the darken blend modes and they all make the image darker. Lighten will make things lighter. These ne this next section is the contrast, so this is basically going to make it brighter and darker depending on what part of the image is bright or dark initially. You have this next section which is a comparative blend mode. This has difference, exclusion, exclusion subtract, divide. So this kind of combines and can really changes the colors as well as uh, plays around with the exposure of the image as well. And then underneath this comparison, there is a composite mode. Uh, so this, you can't see it on the screen, uh, cut it, it's just being cut off, but you got hue, saturation, color, and luminosity. These have to do with um, the colors as well and how the colors interact with each other. Another way to scroll through these, which I kind of like doing, is if you have a layer selected and you press the shift button on your keyboard and then the plus, or minus buttons, which are on my keyboard next to the delete key, should be to the right of the number zero on your keyboard. You can kind of just scroll through and see what this looks like. Now notice though, if I have one selected and I have this woman jumping layer on top of another layer, it's still going to work. Now if this one is visible though, it's going to change how it looks or if this one's visible and this layer is on one half of the image and then this water, let's move this water texture to the left hand side of the image. That's starting to look pretty funky, pretty, pretty weird, but you'll notice that the blend mode is only affecting this top image and where it is over this bottom image. So as I said in the beginning, it affects this layer that you're changing the blend mode to over any other layer that is visible. So that's what blend modes are and that's how you change blend modes. In the next lessons, we're going to be looking at some specific case uses for choosing a particular blend mode. Here's a fun one. So say you have an image like this where it's a black logo on a white background. A really quick way to remove that white background is through the multiply effect or the darken effect. You can see that automatically that white disappears and that's how basically the multiply effect works is anything that's white is transparent and then anything that is lighter becomes less transparent going all the way down to the darker parts of your image that aren't transparent at all. And that's kind of how you can understand what these blend modes do. And the other ones like screen and lighten do the opposite. The white parts stay opaque and the black parts stay become more transparent. This will only work for a completely black logo though. 
Uh, if you have something that isn't black, let me find my v Video School Online logo. So here's my VSO logo. And I just found this camera icon on a website called iconfinder.com. So if I change this to multiply or darken, you'll see that it doesn't quite work because the uh, because the color of the logo is not black. It's this teal, which is not completely um, going to be transparent then. So there's other ways you can get rid of a white background for this object. We've seen that in the past with our selection tools. You can just use the magic wand tool to select the white and then just delete it but it can't be deleted because it's a smart object. So we have to convert this or rasterize this rather, and then we can delete that. So that's a quick way to get rid of a white backdrop on a logo that has another color. Now, let me just show you a quick trick too. So say you have this image and you use that uh, darken op option to get rid of the white backdrop. But say you want this camera to be white instead of black. You can do that by c inverting this layer. To invert the colors of a layer, select it and press Command I. And now since this has actually uh, inverted the colors, instead of multiply, we will use screen. So if you ever have a, a um, layer that you want to change from black to white, you can invert it with just simply command I. But if it does have a background that you're removing via a blend mode, make sure that you change the blend mode from multiply to screen so that that now black background gets removed. All right, hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in another one. Here's a cool trick. So what if we want to make this coffee cup and turn it into something like an ocean cup? Hmm, deep, right? All right, so let's open this coffee cup in Photoshop. And we wanna add this water texture that is from this other project to this new one that we've opened. We can either go back into our finder and find that file and add it as we know how to do, or you can simply copy it from this project to another one. So just select that layer, copy it, and then go over to your new project and paste it, Command C, Command V. So you can see now if we scroll through our uh, blend modes, like so, just holding the shift button and then pressing the plus or minus keys, we can see how we can turn this coffee mug into sort of an interesting water mug, but still have some of that texture of the coffee behind, right? But we just want this, the center part, obviously, to be the selection for this coffee mug. So there's multiple ways to do that to create a circle cutout. One of the easiest is to go to our elliptical marquee tool. We haven't really looked at the marquee tool, but it's basically a way of making a selection for a layer that you can then copy into a new layer or delete or all kinds of stuff. Kind of similar to our selection tools down here, like our quick selection tool, but it's for a specific shape. So with the ellipse tool on, uh, there are options up here. Um, your standard one might be set to this option right here, new selection, rather than add to selection or these, these options here. And your feathering might be down at zero. I'm actually going to leave it at like 10 right now. But with our water layer selected, um, I'm going to actually turn off the view of that layer so that I can better see this cup. And starting from the middle of the cup about, I'm just going to click and drag out. Then I'm going to hold the option key so that this ellipse is growing from where I clicked and also hold the shift key down because I know this is probably going to be a pretty much a perfect circle. And so I'm going to get it to be about the exact size of the circle inside the mug. And then using my shift and arrow keys, I'm just going to move it right over the center of this coffee mug. 
Now with our water texture layer selected, I'm going to copy and paste. So let's say copy, paste. Now if we turn off our water texture, you can see that the edges do blend a little bit because we have feathering. And let's change our blend mode to, let's just scroll through them now, see what we like. Ooh, screen, that's pretty cool actually. Looks like you're drinking a cup of pool water with some bubble coffee bubbles. Also, linear dodge, that looks a little bit more natural. That looks a little funky. Looks like you're drinking some sort of uh, bacteria. And that's looking pretty cool too. So you can play around with this, but again, just trying to get creative using your blend modes and also uh, these other tools and skills that you know how to use now, like the marquee tool. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in another lesson. Here's a cool example of using blend modes to enhance an image and create this sort of spotlight effect. So first you need to find an image of like this spotlight uh, style or texture like this. You can find these online, uh, search for light leaks or spotlights or lens flare, that kind of thing. I've added one to the photos folder for project six. So go ahead and bring this into the project six project and I put it on top of the woman jumping layer. So say we want to create sort of effect where uh, this spotlight is shining on her. Well, we can go through our blend modes with this selected and you can kind of see, start to see what might happen. First though, let me change the size of this. So I'm gonna make it bigger. I'm gonna make it the full size of the frame so that it's covering everything and really shining on her. But then I'm also going to squeeze it. Now to squeeze this image, if I take this right handle and bring it in, it's going to decrease the size of everything. So I have to hold the shift button down and squeeze this in like this, making that spotlight a little bit more narrow. And even if we make it a little bit taller like this and move it up, that's kind of cool like that. So, now we can play with our, our uh, blend modes and see like the different effects that this will have. You can either do like uh, a shining light like this with one of the light in uh, blend modes or with one of the contrast ones should look pretty cool like overlay or hard light, vivid light, linear light. I actually really like that linear light. And maybe you want this to be an angle. Maybe you want it to look like She's kind of like jumping out of this spotlight, like something like that. She's jumping up. Or maybe it's shining this way. Ooh, that's kind of cool. So I kind of like that and maybe make it a little bit wider. Like so, so that she is completely covered. And this also helps because the very edges of the frame are covered by this image as well. If those edges aren't covered, then you can add sort of like a black shape on the edges to, to cover them. Let me just fix the rotation, something like that's pretty cool. All right, I could keep tweaking this, but the thing I actually wanna show you is you can actually now make some adjustments to the color of this layer and it will change how not only the blend mode looks but also the overall image. And so to make an adjustment, we know we can go to the adjustment layer button down here. And for this one, I'm going to choose hue saturation and I want it to be more of a warmer yellow light. So I'm gonna take my hue, drag it to the left, something like so. That's looking pretty good. And then saturation, maybe just go down a little bit on the saturation so it's not as colorful. Now this hue saturation effect is being applied to everything below the layer, right? 
That's what we've learned before. So both the spotlight, if we turn this off, it's also adjusting the hue of this woman jumping. But I don't want it to affect this layer of the woman jumping. I just want it to apply to the layer beneath it. There's an option for that. So with this adjustment layer selected, you have this option at the bottom of the properties panel to create a clipping mask, basically. So this basically means that this adjustment will only be applied to the spotlight layer. So if I click that, you can see that now it's not affecting anything except for the spotlight. And that makes the colors a little bit more natural. And I think for this image, it looks, it looks better. There's a quicker way to automatically make sure that your adjustment layer uh, only applies to the layer beneath it. I don't know if it's much quicker, but instead of going to the adjustment button down here and going that route, you can just go up to layer, new adjustment layer, and then if you choose one of these, say hue saturation, just make sure that this is checked on. Use previous layer to create clipping mask, and that's automatically going to basically do the same thing. And you see here this little arrow on the left-hand side of this layer, that means that has a clipping mask and it's only going to be applied to what's beneath it. Now, after looking at this, I kind of think like I want to rotate it back this way, just coming straight down from the heavens above. It's pretty cool. So just another case study of how I would personally use blend modes to create a really cool graphic sort of spotlight look. And you can do kind of the similar thing with um, other light leaks or camera flares like I mentioned. I think this color dodge, that was another one that was cool. And last thing I'll mention too is if it's coming on a little strong, you can always drop the opacity of this layer itself. So of the spotlight layer, and that helps a little bit too, okay? Awesome. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in another lesson. Welcome to this new project. This is a really, really cool one. This is the project that I came up with for bl using blend modes. It also combines a lot of other techniques, including some brushes that we haven't looked at yet. So make sure you check out the solution video to learn how to start using brushes in your projects. But super, super cool and amazing what you can do with the skills that you've learned so far. You can do pretty much 99% of this with what you've learned in the class so far. It's just all about layering your skills on top of each other and literally layering different layers on top of each other in Photoshop. So go ahead, get creative with it. Use the Project 6 Blend Modes PSD file. And of course you have the final project to see what I did with this project. And uh, we'll just go from here. Awesome. I'll see you in the solution video and I can't wait to see your work too. Welcome to the solution video for this project. Awesome. So I just want to really kind of go over, do a brief overview of kind of the layers that I'm using here so you can kind of see what's going on and then I'll walk through it. So starting from the front and you can do that by going from top bottom in your layers we have this little water puddle in the bottom that I kind of did to thematically look like this lady is jumping out of or into the water. We have the woman in the middle who's flying up. We have our splash text Below that, we actually have some detail. We got a little uh, woman, the same woman in the background, just adding some more detail. We have these little 
mark brush strokes here that look like uh, they're coming out of her hands and feet to add a little bit of, bit of motion. We have a couple texture layers just giving some texture to the background. And then of course we have the background layer itself, which is the image of this, this lady jumping. All right, so hopping to our project six, let's just start working on these layers. So we're gonna make this layer of her jumping bigger. So holding the option key down, just gonna put it so that she's pretty much centered in frame. The next thing we're going to do before we actually add any texture is make sure we have the selection of her and we are going to have that um, to work with later on. So I'm actually going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to put one in the background on the bottom and then for this top layer we're just going to make our selection. So there's different ways you can do this. I'm just going to do it with our quick selection brush. So I'm just going to paint over, make sure you have the layer of her selected so that Photoshop knows where to make your selections. This is just kind of a quick rough selection because I am gonna go into our select and mask tool, window, panel, whatever you wanna call it, and improve this. This one is a little bit diffi more difficult than some of the other ones we've worked on in the past because the colors of the background of her hair, of her hands, of her shoes are a little bit more similar. Something like that looks pretty good though. Yeah, the hair is pretty difficult. So let's just go in and start selecting and masking. Wow, see, so it selected this whole piece of the wall over here. So first off, we do have our smart radius on, radius up. That was a little bit too high. Eight pixels looks pretty good. So now with our quick selection tool, I'm going to subtract, holding the option key down, subtract that part of the wall, subtract this part in front of her face. And that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna zoom in, get these details. Quick selection, let's make sure we get her shoe. So the more you do this, the more Photoshop's gonna know like, oh, you want this specific color of beige, not this other very similar specific color of beige. Let's go up to her, hair, her hand, same thing. Her arm right here. And when you have a person in motion like this, it does get a little harder depending on the photo because there can be photo blur in it. And that kind of is, hard to for Photoshop to know where is the edge of this. We are going to be using our edge refine tool. So let's go ahead, go use our edge refine tool. And with this, we're just gonna paint over our edge, the edge of our hand. Mm, that did an okay job, but we're gonna go back in here, make sure we select our hand. Mm, let's undo that, actually. Sometimes you just gotta mess around with it until it works. Let's start out with our hair. So if we're painting over our hair, if you're painting on, you're like, whoa, this is getting too much, but it's when you unclick that Photoshop actually finishes the job and, and actually makes that selection. So that's pretty good. Let's go down to her feet. We have these shoelaces. That does a pretty good job too. These ones too down here. Switching between our edge, refine edge tool and our quick selection tool. And you can also do this um, using a layer mask after we've made this main selection to get super specific and super fine. So, you know, if we were actually doing this for like the cover of a magazine or a print advertisement, you would want to be perfect with this, right? We're just doing this for fun. So I think that's pretty good for now. We might just smooth out just a little bit, add a little bit of feathering. And then for our output settings, we will choose layer mask and click OK. All right, so that's pretty darn good. And so let's actually hide these layers right here. So now this lady is directly over this background. 
And for now, I am going to link these two because if I move the background at all, I want this top layer to move as well. All right, so now let's start adding some texture. So we have this grunge texture. Let's make this the full color or full size of this image. And that's pretty cool, right? Just simply like that is, is cool. You could do a lot just with that background texture, but we want to use a blend mode. So I'm gonna go, hmm, I'm forgetting what I used for the original project and I don't necessarily have to match it exactly. I used hard light at 75%. Hey, I was on hard light. <laughs> that looked good to me, but it was a little bit too much. So we're gonna decrease the opacity to 75. We're also going to turn on our water layer. And I think I did multiply. And again, let's drop this down to like 50% or something. So that's, that's pretty cool right now, having that, that texture to it. The next thing we're gonna do, let's just go ahead and add uh, this other layer of her in the background. So we're just going to copy and paste this layer and that one that moved from the top, we're going to actually move up and put it in the background. Now the reason I did that instead of just moving this background one is, and we can actually lock these grunge textures in the background, is because if I move this one that I had that I had copied from that's underneath, it's linked to this bottom one and I don't wanna move that. So we're gonna move this top one, make it bigger, and we're gonna just put it behind our woman jumping and let's just change our blend mode. Screen is pretty cool, color dodge. Again, I can't remember exactly what I had chosen in our original project. Just trying to find something cool, actually. I use Color Dodge. That's kind of cool. So just, again, adding these little details, right? So again, you can kind of just keep working at it. Let's add our text. Splash. Okay, so it's super small. You can't see it, but I did type in the word splash. Let's change the color to white. We have to place it by pressing the return key before we can change the color. So that's something you might run into is if you're moving or resizing your text and then you're like, oh, I wanna change the color. Oh, it's not letting me. It's because you have to place your item. Kind of like we've seen before with our Im uh, different images. Now the font that I'm using is called Franchise and I'm pretty sure this is not one that is available on most computers. So you're gonna have to find it online just for personal use or just pick another cool font that you like. And I'm gonna put this right behind our person jumping. And this is the kind of cool stuff that you'll get better at as you create more and more graphics. But you know, you don't know, you can't see exactly what this says, but you know it says splash, right? Because she's jumping, but maybe you don't know quite enough. So to make it more obvious, we're going to add a little puddle down at the bottom, right? I realized in our other option, it's not the water texture that is this layer right here. It's this water layer right here. So we're gonna make this a little bit bigger and then put this above the grunge texture, put it to multiply at 50%. And then this water texture layer is what we're going to create the sort of puddle at the bottom with. So how are we going to create this sort of circular bit down here? Again, there's lots of ways, but we're going to use the elliptical marquee tool again, but I'm gonna show you a different option. So say we make this selection at the bottom like so. Let's put it down just a little bit. Instead of doing that whole copy paste thing we did with the coffee cup, which um, ends up not being the best way to do it because then that new layer becomes non-editable in the sense that we can't get back the rest of the image we wanna use a layer mask. And so with the selection made, we can just click the layer mask button. And now we have this puddle down at the bottom using that ellipse mask that we had created. Now what I did with this, 
puddle down here, you can see there's this kind of texture at the top of the layer. And if I change this from hard light to normal, you can really see what it looks like. See how it has this texture? We did that with a brush. And so we've seen this before when we've edited layer masks. We've used the brush to add white or black. So down here, you see if we add white, we will add back this water. Black will get rid of it. But we could actually change what the brush looks like. So to get to the brush settings, you can go up to window, brushes, or click this little folder button with the brushes on it. And now there are a ton of different options for brushes. I can't remember exactly which brush I used, uh, but you can just pick any of them. Here you can download brushes from online. You kind of get a preview of what the brush looks like down below. So I want one with like a lot of texture. Something like that looks pretty cool. And now with this brush set to white or black, it doesn't really matter. Um, I, I can either erase with it or add with it. I'm just going to brush over like this. Now that looks a little bit different than my original one. I think I used a different brush. Let me try one of these other ones. Maybe this one's pretty cool. That one's pretty cool. Okay, so if we use that one, and again, you can use the black brush to add or to subtract or the white brush to add. So let's do the white brush. Let's add some to the top edge. And it just gives a little bit of a texture to the top of this puddle. I actually think I like the one from before that I used. All right, I think I found the right one actually. I think it's this 306 brush. So let's get out of here, let's make it a little bit smaller. And again, with your brushes, you can hold the control option key down on your Mac to make it bigger or smaller. That would be command alt on a PC. So now we can add some texture. I don't know if that's the right one, but it's just adding to it, adding some texture, making, making it a little bit more unique and different. Now let's make this, turn this to hard light. Now we had it. And I think I want to move up our girl. So we're going to move all of this up like so. And we'll move our text up as well. You might as well link the, the girl, the te splash text to the girl. That's pretty good. And then lastly, we want to add some brush strokes to her hands and feet to really accentuate the motion. So unlike what we've done before with the brush in terms of editing a layer mask, we want to use the brush, a brush to actually brush on something completely new to actually like paint on our project. To do that, we need to do it on a new layer. You can brush on an existing layer, but it can't be a smart object. But for this case, we want it to be on a new layer. So just click this new layer button down at the bottom right next to the trash can. You can see a layer was created, and this is just a completely blank layer at this point, but we can brush on it. So let's change our brush to something a little bit softer, something like that, it's pretty cool. You could change the size, spacing, all kinds of stuff here uh, with these settings as well. Something like that looks kind of cool. And there's all sorts of different um, options here in your, uh, in your settings down here that can adjust your brushes as well, okay? So now let's make sure that our color is set to white. So we have white selected and we're just going to add some brush strokes. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you're using a tablet with a stylus, this would probably come out even better. Something like that. It's kind of cool. All right, so that looks pretty cool. All right, so now let's put this underneath our uh, text layer. That's the layer we want it under. And then let's change the blend mode. Something like overlay or soft light is pretty good. I think overlay looks good. And now if we just compare to this one, we can see our brush strokes were a little bit different in this one coming from different angles, but you get the point. These are all the different layers we're adding on top of each other to make this a dynamic image. I think that 
the lady herself could use a quick adjustment layer for uh, contrast and brightness. So I'm gonna use the curves adjustment. So with curves, we're gonna add just a little bit more exposure and we want this just to apply to her. So we choose this clipping mask option. And now that's just going to apply to her instead of the entire, any other layers. Creating some more dynamic contrast. Something like that is actually pretty cool. Awesome, so that is my project. I would love to see what you do with this project. And as always, tag me in your post on social media. Share it on Instagram or Facebook. Tag me at Phil Ebener or at Video School Online. Cool, thanks so much, and we'll see you in another lesson.